Hey everybody, this is Brian of Yellow. On Origin Stories on Creativity number 48, I had E. Rachel Hardcastle join me again. Uh, she is doing something pretty exciting. She is getting out there and offering services other than just being an indie author. She's editing, and she's doing marketing, and she is offering educational services as well. Not just for children, but for other indie authors. Um, why is she doing that? Because she taught herself, and she's giving back. Uh, she's offering a webinar right now. It's available through her website. This information is going to be on the show notes. Um, there's going to be tons of links available on the show notes, so check it out definitely for sure. Uh, I think the webinar is only going for $10 right now. I highly recommend taking a look at it. Um, it's filled with really great information that will lead you in the right direction. Ultimately, you know, she advises be brave and be yourself. I mean, you can't go wrong with either one of those informa- uh, bits of information. The best person to talk about E. Rachel Hardcastle is, in fact, E. Rachel Hardcastle. Uh, let me hear myself. So far, so good. I can hear myself a little bit at your end. Ah, it's horrible. Only really faintly, myself. though. Like, it won't put me off. Okay. I don't know if I hear myself or not. Maybe the eclipse is messing with us. Are you going to get an opportunity to see any anything on your end of the world? No, it's really, really cloudy here. I don't think we'll see anything at all. Oh, really? I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what happens. Usually zombies and... All types of stuff happen, I think. Zombies. Zombies. Opening up the sliding glass door and looking outside. Have my shotgun Shall ready. Like the zombies everything. you want to close the glass door. Well, I'm ready, man. I got my dog here. I got the shotgun. I got a crossbow. I've been working my cardio. I'm ready for it, man. Oh, okay, well, you sound pretty prepared. I'm then. pretty prepared. Got a broken leg, so I don't know. <laughs> so you've been doing um your your webinar that's what i wanted to talk to you about I've been doing loads of things. what have you been working on um i've got my webinar up and running um that went live a week ago i think a week ago uh, maybe a little bit more um and i have my copy editing services my cover services formatting services all that lovely stuff um and about a million and one other things <laughs> i'm really busy well how how is all that stuff going for you and and now you've also including writing too because you've got that project that we've been talking about the death fantasy piece um the death fantasy piece is nearly finished oh, great. Um, the editing part of it the editing part obviously is, is yet to come. Um, but you're, but you're ready have... on your way to a first draft. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, in about a week, I'll probably be there. I'll probably be done. Um, it's a novella length. It's not a novel. Um, because Does I don't that want mean, to force. Like first draft, you're going to get it second draft up to novel length. Or do you envision it being a novella all the way? No, I think it'll be a shorter piece all the way, to be honest. It's unusual for me because most times when I write, I go for something bigger. Um, but I think it just it's as long as it needs to be. And I feel that I'm kind of coming up on the the correct word count for it. It'll need an edit, um, maybe a rough rewrite kind of thing, um, depending, depending on so how much work he's doing. When I write first draft, I always know it's going to end up longer. I know there's stuff that I cheated on getting to the end. How do you know you're you haven't cheated yourself on on the draft well i run story beats alongside um alongside the manuscript so but i don't know if you know what the meaning of story beats is and what they're for but um no tell me okay well um each author kind of uses story beats differently um my story beats run alongside my manuscript so i write a chapter and then i go back through the chapter and i think right okay um in this chapter this this and this needed to happen and basically I'll break break it down. So it's a little bit like doing a synopsis for the story as I'm going through it. And then I basically color code everything. So anything that I've written into that chapter that's 
character related that's like what they're wearing anything about their backstory it all goes in one color and then I use blue for subplots or something that I might need to answer later on so then when I get through the whole book I can go back through my beats and easily find based on the colors all the important information that I can go back and fact check I can make sure that all my subplots have been um, answered and are like um, completed and satisfactory um, so I run my story beats alongside it so I know when I'm doing each chapter that I've got everything in the chapter that needs to be there um, so that's how I kind of realized that the book is as long as it needs to be because if everything in the story beats is as I was expecting it to be then I'm good to go if when I go back through the story beats and there's a lot of information missing or I've not covered what I wanted to cover um, then I know that I've underwritten the book and it needs to be longer so that's kind of how I do it you're a plotter though i think if i remember correctly from our, our first conversation you're not a i think pantser I'm kind, is the term i'm kind of a bit of both um i like really? to at the beginning i know roughly like yeah i get my ideas down so i'll know roughly like i have a brief roadmap so i know how the story is going to start i always envision how it's going to open and what's sort of going to kick the story off and then i know roughly a couple of events through the book and a kind of an ending um, but I never kind of spoil it for myself. I like to then dive in and, and do the writing, but then I plot alongside what I'm doing. So I can free, I could free write a whole chapter and not know where I'm going with it, but I would then make sure that I do my story beats so that I don't get any surprises next time. Oh man, you, uh, the way I write would drive you absolutely crazy. I wouldn't even know where I'm at in a whole draft and then go back in and fill it out. <laughs> I think it's each to their own. I used yeah, to right. write, I used to be a, a pantser, com like complete pantser, just throw myself at it and just go for it. Um, but I guess but your schedule is so of... full though, you can't afford to mess around anymore. You really got to finish something fast. When is this, this is due what, the end of the year, right? Christmas time? You have to be done with it and on to something else? I, I want the actual editing and everything done by the end of October. October, purely because. God. My birthday is yeah. October 7th <laughs> and you want to give it to me? Well, I want it done by the end of October. Um, oh. And then that's purely because in December, right at the beginning of December, I have um, an event coming up. So I want November to do all my proof copies and mm -hmm. order my um, paperbacks and just check that they're okay. And then I need time obviously for Create Space to deliver my huge order that I'm gonna be hopefully selling at the event. And the event's on, I think it's the, I wanna say the 17th. Yeah. December I could be wrong wow. um, but it's basically for like a Christmas market and a reading and potentially hopefully um, a, a local indie star stocking my book so it really needs to be done and dusted in time for that because if I miss it I could be missing some huge opportunities right. so end of October really is my deadline so is this like a Christmas present to yourself this book being finished by the holiday season uh, yeah you could say that as well because as you really like other the thing. marketing don't you this, that's like your bread and butter. It's your, your why you kind of do this. I, I like the whole process. I just like getting stuck in. I think that's what indie's been, what being an indie is about. And if you're independently published, you, you can't just expect everybody to throw money and opportunities at you. You need to get out there and, and find these things yourself. And I just think the indies that just sit and <clears throat> publish their book and then six months later when they've sold five copies to their mum, Winch that <laughs> not going the right way. I just kind of think you, you need a bit of a reality check in a nice, in the nicest possible way. You need a God, reality how, check because I need to figure out how to sell my mom a copy of my stupid novel. How do you sell your mom? <laughs> <laughs> my mom refuses. I, don't, oh, I, think buying that crap. <laughs> I think my mom gets a complimentary copy just for being my mom. Oh, but um, <laughs> yeah, these, these people that, that just expect sales magically to appear, and I yeah. think. If, if big publishers can't get sales to magically appear, they have to do their own marketing. You know, they have to do billboards and uh, TV ads and whatever else they might be doing and organize book signings and radio interviews. And the they put a lot of effort into their cover. That I kind of noticed about what you were doing because I'm obviously I'm paying attention to you because you're incredibly interesting to me, um, especially everything that you're doing uh, in terms of your books and your, you. your kind of your business, in fact. Um, what you're building is you're working with other authors too. Yes. You know, you could put up a shingle basically and you could become a publishing house. I mean, you could take on talent and you can build their, their product for them. 
<laughs> well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really that. need any more authors. I mean, you, you're basically. I think king. I've got enough authors with just me. Right, but in a go way. On. You are right. Go on. If, what do you have a name for your 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 label, the Hardcastle label? No. No, um, I'm, I don't, I'm not a publishing house. I'm not a publishing company. I don't really want to be yet. I think me do you, do you think on my own feel, is enough. Do you think it would make you feel or make people feel, because you are doing so much of this work. Do you think if you designed a label and stuck it on your book, people would say, oh, well, this is legit. This isn't an indie publisher. This is, you know, blah, blah, blah house. Because I mean, the work that you put into it, the covers and whatnot, the effort isn't really, you know, like you said, that person sitting behind the desk selling five copies of their novel to their mom. You're doing legit mm -hmm. work. You deserve to have legit credit, right? Um, I, I don't know. There's, I think there's for and against arguments. So the for arguments would be, yeah, it, it does kind of make it a bit more legitimate. And people might take me a little bit more seriously if I had some kind of publishing label. But at the same time, I'd feel a bit of a fraud because... I'm not a publishing house, I'm an individual. And these people that set up publishing houses, I can understand why they do it. And they do exactly who, the same as me, it? they put so much effort in. So people but, do this, who are they that do it? Or why they do it? Well, what's, what am I asking? Ask the question for me and then answer it. Do this podcast from beginning to end as the interviewer and as the interviewee, go. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm just going to sit back and listen. <laughs> no, seriously, what I'm asking is, I think the reason um, that... who is somebody that actually does that? Who put a shingle up with a name on it and says, I am now a publishing house and I publish my own book? And how does it look bad? Why do you think it looks bad? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it looks bad. I just... I just feel that I would be, I, I would be expecting, if I was putting a label on it, I'd be expecting more than me. Like I'd be expecting two or three people each doing, like one person doing cover, one person doing whatever. A publishing house or a publishing label to me in, is like a is like a company other than just an indiv like a sole trader. So for me, I would, if I could do it, I mean, I could do it under my own name. I could do it like Hardcastle Publishing or whatever. And then I wouldn't feel as bad, but I don't know. It's not that I'm any less, legitimate than I am having a name like that but I just wouldn't feel that I was a house I would feel that I was just me and that by having some kind of label on it that I was somehow deceiving people into trusting me to provide these services even though I'm perfectly legitimate in what I'm doing and I just want to help people but I don't know just something about having a name and being this publishing house doesn't feel right to me because I am at the moment uh, I am just me in terms of like providing services you're really not providing services you're just opening a road for them to take their book to market. And you're really not doing anything other than making them work for what they want. You know, I mean, you're doing a lot of work for yourself. You would just be showing up. Tell me a little yeah. bit about your webinar. I meant to do it on Sunday. And obviously I have twins. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about <laughs> what you're doing with that. I know it's not al altruistic. You, you, you charge um, an entrance fee or tell me from beginning to end what exactly that, that, is the webinar okay okay well basically i've been for the past kind of 18 months i've really seriously been going at this as an author so yeah the tw past 12 months really have been kind of from publishing to where i am now and then the six months before that was kind of planning researching that kind of thing so over that amount of time i've gathered tons and tons of information resources free links to free stuff and various other things. And I basically just wanted to put something together that was like a crash course on how indies can introduce themselves to marketing because most of them are terrified of it. I was. It's all it's it's suddenly like, well, I've it's published daunting. a book, but I'm the author and I'm it's very I'm daunting. Just, yeah, I'm just interested in writing and I'm too it's it's too scary. I don't want anything to do with marketing. Well, if you're an indie author, the two come hand in hand. You can't really be an author, an indie author, well, an author of any kind and not do any kind of marketing. It's just you just won't get anywhere. For me so, personally, it just feels like you do stuff and it just disappears. You know, you don't get a lot of feedback from it. And I had a friend, Jason Abbott, I talked yeah. to him and he's on a bunch of my shows. You know, he says, you know, you just got to give it time. I mean, I've done this podcast for three months and I'm said, well, I'm not famous yet. And he was, you've only been doing it for three months, man. What do you want? Keep going. <laughs> yeah. Keep doing it. I mean, you got to think well. Trying. That's that's one of the tips. The last thing in the marketing webinar is that Rome wasn't built in a day and that yeah. you need to, it is just about collecting this information and doing exactly as I have. I mean, I'm 18 months down the line. I'm by no means where I want to be, but I'm a hell of a lot further than 
at home looking at a blank Kindle report thinking, why am I not selling anything when they're not to actively promote it? So mm -hmm. the webinar is my top 10 ways to introduce yourself to marketing. So to ease yourself into it, to learn the basics, it covers things from social media, how to post on social media, when not to post, um, the kinds of things that you need to be posting, how to approach people for friend requests and when that's appropriate and when it isn't. Um, and it's all basically based on my own experiences and my own advice. So, I mean, you, you take it or leave it. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. If I advise something and it doesn't work, well, it, it's something that you've tried that you just add on to the list. But I really strongly believe that there is no such thing as I've tried everything because if you've tried everything, you should surely have a list of all the different things that you've tried as evidence that it didn't work. So I don't know. I just don't believe people when they say that they've tried everything because there's no such thing. There is that much stuff out there that can help you to promote. There's always a new way to look at it, a new way to approach it, something else that you can try, someone else that you can ask for help. Or it, sometimes it's just a matter of luck. It's a matter of wanting to give up tomorrow and then reminding yourself that tomorrow might just be the day when that opportunity comes in. And if you quit, how are you ever going to know? How are you ever going to be able to take advantage of that? So it's basically my top 10 tips of how to just get stuck in and go through it and enjoy it. Do you examine wrong headedness in terms of the marketing aspects of, of book selling or indie book selling, looking at things in a skewed way, not seeing things appropriately? I mean, it's all an art form, right? I mean, you're telling a story, you're writing a novel, you're writing a short story, you're you're telling a story, and marketing is kind of like that too. You're trying to capture attention, you're trying to capture somebody's wallet, basically, in a way. I mean, as crude as that might be. Do you go well, about? Well, it's the truth. To... I think that's what. Yeah. I think it's it's mostly how people look at themselves. I wouldn't say it's how you can you can get money off people because i wouldn't look at it like that it is a little bit crude i think it's just about how to how to value yourself and what you do and what your skills are and what you're capable of so i think it's just i'm basically just trying to let indies recognize the potential in themselves and in marketing especially the early stages even just learning how to link your facebook and twitter feeds together is a success and it can really make you think wow this is i've gone from never using social media ever and not really knowing what to do with it to now having them all linked and all updating and I'm getting professional images put on there, images that I'm creating for free on software that I've learned to use in 30 minutes because it's that easy. Um, so it's just a matter of confidence for me. I just want to well, yeah, get let's people examine to feel that. that they can do it. Let's crack that word okay. confidence open. How do you develop the confidence to know that you're making the right artistic choices for your social media? Is that a loaded question or can you actually look at that and I well um it's hard to break it down but I don't think well confidence I think is just a matter of setting yourself the smaller goals and when what's you meet that goal, goal what's a smaller goal and like so let's look at a brand new me, writer I wrote a novel that's really important right the end I wrote a novel now yeah. what I'm gonna write my social media marketing plan and the first thing is a picture and blah but you tell me Okay, well, if you're a brand new author, I would suggest the first thing you do, obviously, is set up your social media. So you'd be looking at a Facebook account of some kind, whether that's a page or an actual new account under a new name, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, getting set up on all the platforms and beginning to build those platforms, be it... But um, I'm saying, like, specifically, or... like, comp like, the idea... Look, in terms of my, my social media, my, oh my God, look at my Patreon. Um, it's horrible. <laughs> it's so but bad. why is it horrible? It's because so I don't maintain it. One, I, don't, I don't maintain it. I have no clue what I'm actually supposed to do there to A, cap, captivate um, an audience so they give me money, crude. And we'll just continue to do that yeah. crude open wallet bullshit. Um, three, uh, I don't even know if I hit a two. You know what? It's not maintained. I have no clue how to maintain it. I don't know how to capture an audience there, and I don't know how to direct attention there or traffic there. So that's like four okay. different things. I have no clue how to use Patreon. It seems like it's kind of a dead site. <laughs> but if I go to one of my favorite okay, well, content creators, like a Scott Johnson, he makes ten thousand dollars a month, and he hardly ever even mentions Patreon. Maybe in the very beginning of his show, or maybe at the very end. 
something, you know, he gets like 30 or 40,000 downloads per podcast episode. Okay. Well, I think you said it yourself in the beginning that it's not maintained. So all of the things that you've mentioned are on you. Um, so if you, if you're looking at maintaining it and looking at ways to maintain that, the other thing I can tell you to do is to model other people that have done it and done it successfully. So look at these successful people on pa Patreon, is it? I've not, I don't use Patreon, so I'm not fully in the zone with it. But the only thing I can tell you is that you would have a look at whoever is doing well on Patreon, what their profile looks like on Patreon, the sort of things that they post, um, the kind of images that go up, the professional standard of it, and just model it to so basically copy it. And I'm not talking copying text, because that would be plagiarism, but I'm talking if they put up a professional headshot, with a snippet from their blog and then a link to their book and it gets 30,000 likes and loads of money, well, then you need to be doing that. You need to be doing exactly the same thing. I do it with my merchandise. I model other authors for my merchandise and so far it's gone pretty well because the authors that I've modeled have done well with it. Mm -hmm. So if it's proven to work for one person, why can it not work for the other person? So yeah. if you're really struggling to, to get it going and you're not maintaining it, well, you need to be looking at ways to maintain it and to maintain it to the same degree that these other successful authors are doing that. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely, because they do that in athletics too. You model behavior off of a successful athlete and maybe exactly. modify that to become a better athlete than that original, but you're basically doing the same thing to become a good athlete. Exactly, and back to the confidence of it. If you don't initiate this if you don't actually get it going you're never going to have any successes that add to your confidence because you're so scared to actually take the step so if it, if modeling that person requires that you do something quite out of your comfort zone such as brian being on videos with your face rather than just your voice <laughs> it's horrible i can't um, then you're i never, even thought of a vlog I'm, well exactly I'm old man walks a dog and i just my my writing area is so dark i tried a video and just like a black blob sitting looking at my camera it doesn't work very well <laughs> but the thing is you're you're talking yourself out of doing this because of yeah. the fear behind it so if you were to sit down and tell yourself this is just one other thing that i need to get over and do if you were to do it once and do it successfully and get some positive feedback on it then all of a sudden that fear disappears because you've no, done it and you've, it took 30 seconds to post it so the, the first part of my marketing webinar is literally just about if you don't ask or you don't do something, you don't get in return. So it's literally just taking the 30 seconds it takes to send an email to somebody or the 20 minutes it takes to film a video. Um, and if you don't actually do that, you're not going to get anything in return. So for as long as you're sat on this fear and as long as you're telling yourself you can, then you're not going to be able to because you're telling yourself and you're winding yourself up over it and making it sound scarier than it is and there's so many other authors out there that have been on camera and have been doing this for years and years and love it and get fantastic feedback and i'm sure the same would apply to you you've just got to get over the initial do i click post on this video and if i do what's yeah. gonna happen have i mentioned that yes yeah, the most important thing to success is hitting publish you don't exactly. put anything out there you're not going to get anything back it's the exact same thing with marketing. If you don't ask, you don't get. If you don't do, you don't get anything in return. It's just a matter of getting over that initial, oh, do I do this? What if, what if, what if? Well, instead of saying what if and then adding a negative, just say, well, what if and add a positive. That's exactly what I did when I went for my TV interview. I emailed Wait, the company. And you just did a thought, TV interview? When did you do this? Tell me about this TV interview. That's interesting. <laughs> It was, a, well, I say it's ages, it feels like ages ago. It was back in February this year. Um, oh, so we and talked about this I, then before. We must have done. Um, I basically sat at my PC and thought, right, these kids that I've published in these books, we did some publishing of, of children's books. I'm sure we've talked about this before. I went into yeah. a school, did some work with the kids, and we put together some short story books, and I actually published them um, with my self-publishing kind of knowledge i just self-published them unique books that were only available to them but i kind of thought that they'd put so much work in it and i was looking for the next step i'd been on radio i was kind of thinking well uh, in my goals this year i've got to be on another form of media it's terrifying because they could laugh at me they could think well who the hell is she to ask for an interview and i just thought you know what if i don't ask i don't get so i put together in a couple of minutes an email and sent it off to this tv local tv station um and just thought they're either going to ignore me or they're going to just laugh me away they're just going to laugh at me and i'm never going to hear back from them and i'm going to be the laughing stock of the tv show 
and within a couple of hours it was the same day anyway I got a really enthusiastic yes when can you film we'd love to do this it sounds amazing and I was just like oh my god if I hadn't have actually bothered to send that email and let my fear get the best of me I would never have been on tv these kids would never have been on tv they would now not be in year seven uh, the next stage of, of sort of their education in England yeah. um, in high school with all this behind them as experience they would just be the same children they were before they wouldn't be authors they wouldn't have done any of this so yeah. I kind of think sometimes that 30 seconds to a minute is magic and if you can just get over the fear and do it you can get so much out of it I think and that's so many most, people can benefit I think that's the most disappointing part about your success you haven't been working with kids lately I think you said you canceled. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. I haven't canceled any any events at all with children. Um, oh, good. The, the problem with the way our UK education system works is the summer holidays are upon us at the moment. So they weren't booking events before the summer holidays because obviously they were waiting until their new budgets come in for the new year. They know how much money they've got to spend on events and people coming in and all that kind of thing. Um, and then obviously there's a period of six to seven weeks here in the UK where um, schools are kind of closed, where we can't, there's no contact with teachers because they're all away on leave and so are the kids. And then there's a couple of uh, weeks to like a couple of months where everybody's just getting the budget settled. And then, so I'm kind of looking at a couple of months down the line before anybody will be willing to book me in. So now I've got to put together all my school packs. I've got to start advertising to them. I've got to start telling them what I can offer them, how much it's going to cost, if anything, that kind of stuff. So you've, it's just a matter of timing. And I think the last one that I did, because then I booked in quite a few book signings and speaking events and workshop events in the UK, I literally just had no time for anything else. And when I sent the letters out, because I hit them at the wrong time of the year, I didn't get very many responses. The responses I got were positive, but they all said, we'll have to get back to you when the new budget comes in. Yeah, so, and that soon. It's timing. Well, now you know, and that's cool. I can't wait to hear what's going to happen with that, uh, working with the kids, because I really think that's gold. And you already got an in, too. Those kids yeah, love you. Um, I think that this, that same school want me back. Um, they, I, really, I worked so hard for them that they want me back, um, which is good because I want to then go and work even harder for them this time, if it's possible to do that, um, just to prove that I can surprise them year on year. So... Um, but this, this fir the first time I did it, it was completely free of charge. Everything except for each kid's individual copy that they wanted was free. I provided all the materials and stuff for it. This time, because they know me, they trust me, they know that I do a brilliant job, there is a small fee just to cover my time and uh, my leave from my full-time job and all that kind of thing. Um, and then hopefully next year we can do the same thing. Um, but initially schools should have access to this kind of thing because it's important for children, I think, to, to, to then go into a high school, having just left primary school, so being terrified as it is to go into this big school and be the youngest in the school all of a sudden with no friends, yeah. but knowing in the background that you're a published author, that to some degree gives you that head held high kind of feeling. It gives you that confidence you are a published author. Nobody else in that school is going to be a published author at that such age. A time, it's such a hard time to be a kid though too, that primary school to middle school to high school time range, age range. It is a really scary time for kids and I just wanted to give them some kind of ammunition that hey I'm a published author even if it's just when, they, when they're trying to make friends on the first day. So who are you? What, what's your name? What do you like to do? If they'd have said, well, I'm Bob and I like to write, the kids are going to think, well, I like football, so we have no in common. But if they say, well, I'm Bob and last year I, I did this really lame creative writing thing, but then this author came in and she published me. So now I'm like a published author. How cool is that? That gives kids something to talk about, you know, whether, they, whether they're into writing or not, that's still cool that they've got a book out there with their name on it. So I think it's just, I don't know. I just wanted to give them something that, some of the, of the kids wouldn't have something special give them that seed to write later on give them that seed to read too which so many yeah. people don't have nowadays i mean give them basically future customers for you and me maybe potentially i mean well, yeah a lot a lot of them are actually now um reading more and i've got some that are constantly in contact with me they come to my events i've had a couple that 
this one poor, poor girl, she'd been told the wrong date, so she came on the wrong day to this festival that I was at. And she went around the whole of the festival asking for me. And it got to the point where she went into this other event that was going on and asked there. And they actually rang around all the local libraries to see if we, if she'd got the venue wrong. And it yeah. wasn't the venue, it was the date. So she'd spent all day trying to oh, find no. me purely because she was so invested in writing and learning more from me and coming to see me. So, so do you, to me you write YA fiction, right? It's You have the market yes. YA fiction? Yeah. And is the book that My you're Pandora writing books and the book that you're writing now no. is not YA fiction, no. Do you no. plan on getting back to no. YA fiction after you finish the one that you're working on now? No. Yes, there's another eight okay. Pandora books. So um, those eight books will be YA aimed, um, targeted. And the Aeon books, I would say, well, it depends, really. It depends on whether parents mind mild language. Um, because if they don't mind mild language, they're perfectly fine for young adult. If they do and they don't want them to hear the S word, um, then they're is probably the not the best books. Is it the IT word, or is there another S word yeah. in, in the United Kingdom? I don't no, know. That, that's the right one. <laughs> um, so there's nothing worse than that in the book. It's just, you know, you've got to, it, it's, it's, it's parental judgment, whether, they're, whether or not they're happy with their kids hearing that sort of language, which they'll probably hear worse in school, but that's not my decision. So um, yes, I write YA, but I also dabble in other audiences as well. So you have been uh, dabbling in Tony Robbins. Oh, yes. A little bit as well. How do you think that has helped you with your marketing mission? How Tony do you think Rob has helped you with your marketing mission? I respect think? Tony Robbins because of his motivation and his view of life. I don't, I don't re always agree with everything that he says. Um, I don't believe that if you think happy thoughts, happy things will happen. I think sometimes you can be the happiest person in the world and sometimes stuff just don't go your way. So it really depends on some of the things that he says. I bought a couple of his books purely because he had marketed in ways that I wanted to model. So he actually grabbed me the same way I want to grab other people. So I respect him for that because if he managed to get me, <laughs> you know, I can manage to get all the people using the same method. Real so, quick, let me, um, let me, I want to go Tony Robbins, but I also want to ask you a quick question about Joanna Penn. Okay. Is she a direction that you want to go in, in terms of your career? You mean like what Joanna Penn does or interview yeah. Joanna Penn? Well, no, I don't know. Joanna Penn seems to be like, I don't know. She seems to be at a, <clears throat> well, she's, her, a right? she's a best-selling indie author, isn't she? She's romance, right? No, she's thriller. Thriller, okay. Yeah, she's thriller. Crime and thriller, I believe. Mostly thriller. She's um, amazingly successful. She does yes. her own thing. How is she successful? Because like in terms of numbers on her podcast, she only does like a couple thousand, right? She's not getting like millions and millions. She's only getting like a thousand. Yeah, but I think it's part of its skill in writing. She's a very skilled writer. Um, she like does not. Yes, she does a lot of non-fiction stuff as well, some of which I've read and really like. Um, but I think that's part of it as well. She's got the non-fiction side. So people that maybe haven't read her fiction but have heard that she's this successful author are going to buy her non-fiction and the other way around. So does she write she's a got, lot of uh, how to publish and how to write and all that good stuff too? Yeah, she's got a couple of um, self-publishing stuff out, um, how to market a book. She does webinars and stuff like that. Um, if you follow her on YouTube, she does more stuff than just interview authors. She does all sorts of things. But I think as well, it's all about, like another another tip from my marketing webinar, it's having those extra strings to your bow. She has a lot of different income sources. She doesn't just have writing. She uh -huh. has writing, public speaking, webinars. She'll have... Um, non-fiction books she works with other indies sometimes you know she does she has a range of things that she does um and she's very likable she's very honest she's she is who she is she doesn't she's not bad language and vulgar attitude she's just who she is she's just a nice genuine person and i think sometimes that helps as well if you come across as being a little bit up yourself people don't respect that because they want somebody that they can feel connected to 
Uh-huh. Um, and I think sometimes it's just about building that respect. And she, I think she offers or offered some kind of services as well. So she's got that aspect to it. And I think it's just because she's been going for so long, she's been going since kind of self-publishing took off. So she's got a couple of years head start on us. <laughs> so there's that as well. You know, she wasn't an overnight success. She's worked really, really hard to get to where she is, um, which is why everybody respects it so much. Do you think that um, people that, are just emerging now can achieve that kind of success? Yes. Yeah. There's absolutely no reason why not. Because, again, I go back to the modeling technique. If you were to look at everything that Joanna Penn's done since she emerged out of her cave into the writing world, um, and you did the same thing, yeah, you might have to make a couple of tweaks because time's moved on, technology's moved on, but there's no reason that you can't have the same success in a similar amount of time. Interesting. Well, how much time do you think she spent on this? Decade? Uh, oh, maybe a little bit longer. Interesting. So she's been doing this as long as basically cable internet's been around. Well, <laughs> I think she's from from when self publishing really took off. Back from when it was really like, ooh, self publishing naughty. It means that they're rubbish, you know. Really, when yeah. it was a naughty word, to now. Um, where it's still sometimes an arty word. I just think that she was one of those authors that got in at the right time, right place, right time. Um, but we're all now in the right place at the right time because self-publishing is not so scary anymore. It's not so frowned upon. Um, so but we she, probably have less problems than she would have done back then. She never broke through though, did she? She never broke through the wall of self-publishing. Yes, I think she was traditionally published first. Oh, really? Yeah, she's had traditionally published books and then some of them, I believe, she then decided to go indie for because she realized that she was making more money self-publishing so than the young. other way around. She looks I think, really I think young. she is. <laughs> oh, okay, that was just is. a black and white picture. She's a, she's older than I am a little bit. Her colored picture shows her age a little bit. She's still, she's a very pretty lady. She's, oh, she's from Australia. I don't know she's if she's really from England. Lovely. She's British, but I don't know whether she's lived in Australia for a while. She's British, but she's the nicest person ever. And I think that really counts sometimes. You've just got to be nice and genuine, which is why I kind of open the floodgates sometimes and say, look, if you need to ask me something, ask me. I'm going to be honest with you. If you want to talk to me, talk to me. Because I think half of it is just about being approachable and being that friendly face. Um, so I think that's part of it, to be honest, Brian. Just being available, talking. I mean you yeah. notice that your time is just like disappearing though because you're so nice people want to have a piece of the e rachel hardcastle well pyramid. time is pre- time is precious and time yeah. is money in a business it is you've got to look at yourself as a business because if you don't you're never going to make anything from it um if you don't want to make anything from it and you're doing it purely for a hobby and just for doing it sick well good for you and and well done and carry on but if you are seriously wanting to make money and you want it to be a business or a full-time career eventually you've got to realize that you can't do everything for free for people I want to I would love to help everybody completely free and have them do the same for me I think it'd be a wonderful world but it's not quite the way it works so I help as far as I can for free and then when it gets to the point where I really can't advise anymore without doing myself an injustice, yeah. I then nudge and say, look, you know that I you know that I talk sense, you know that I'm a nice person and that the these tips so far have worked for you. If you want to get more out of it, I've got this webinar. It's a free booklet. You get a workbook with it, an ebook with it, you get minimum of two days with it, ten different tips. It's an hour's webinar, you can access it as many times as you want, and it's only a tenner. That to me is good value. They've, they've, they know that I'm a nice person. They know that I'm not just trying to make money out of them. I, I seriously want to help them, which is why I've not set it at ridiculous amounts of money. I could set it at 50 quid, you know, and, and have people pay 50 quid for it, which I don't think is fair. Um, so that's why I've set it nice and low so that people can access it, that, that people that are perhaps on a budget looking at getting cover designs done and everything else done, it can get expensive. But they might be they might be seriously wanting to learn marketing and I want to offer them something that's cheap and cheerful that does the job without charging them an arm and a leg for it. That's what's so, interesting because it gets icky, doesn't it? It gets really you want to be friendly, you want to be who you are. Yeah. The business side of this thing is awful in a way. It is you, awful. 
It is, I'm not going to lie. It's not the nicest feeling in the world to have to charge somebody for something. But if I gave everything away for free, I would not be able to eat. I like food. I yeah. like being able to ah. pay for food. <laughs> so <laughs> I think people as well, you need to respect that if you, if it was me purchase, going for a service from somebody else, I would never expect anything completely free. I would expect a nice chat, a genuine chat, a friendly conversation or two a couple of free tips and tricks here and there, um, get to know somebody. But I think friends is a very strong word to use as well for people that you don't particularly know that well. I think sometimes acquaintances is better. If somebody adds me on Facebook, well, for a start, they don't get accepted unless I know them. Um, but if they chat with me for a couple of weeks on and off about writing and what they're doing and I get to know about their processes and what books they like to read, um, and they get a couple of tips, marketing tips off me and we exchange stuff like that backwards and forwards. Oh, well, I've done it this way and that worked for me. Oh, great. Well, I've done it this way. Then fair enough. And that can go on for a couple of months even. But there's a line then where if they then come to me and say, well, you know, this webinar that you've got, do you fancy giving me that for free? Well, actually, no, that I'm a business. You know, that's I can chat to people for as for as long as the day is about writing and editing and marketing but there's certain things where you have to draw the line and think well no because I'm, i want to do this seriously as a business i genuinely want to help people but other people have got to think about what's fair for my time and my effort as well um i can't i can't work for free i'd want to but i can't really logically work for free and um, just as other people i would never expect them to do the same thing so it can get icky it can feel uncomfortable um and i'd just say to people if you're in that position just think about logically how far you would push it if you know if somebody was genuinely trying to help you and then they had this service that you think you could benefit from well maybe if you know that it's going to work and you know that this person's genuinely nice how far would you push it would you feel cheeky going to them and saying give us it for free because i would you know so i think it's just you've just got to look at yourself and your own morals and values that's awful, and think, honestly that's kind of why would anybody want to come to you and ask for something for free that they know that you're charging you'd be surprised though there's lots of people in facebook groups that say looking for an editor want it for free not willing to pay you know and i just think sometimes no if you wouldn't expect people to just take your book and not pay you for it so other people's services and time they're giving up their time to help you and time is precious the amount of i mean the amount of stuff i've going on at the, got going on at the moment if i did everything for free i'd be busy from dawn till dusk and i would never make a penny because i'm that busy i just can't afford not to ask what i believe is is a fair donation towards the effort that i've put in and i think that's all that being independently published is try, don't feel guilty don't feel icky i know it can feel icky but try not to let it because at the end of the day what you're offering is valuable and you need to respect yourself and your skills as well. Would you be being disrespectful to yourself if you did everything for free? Would, do you not feel that you deserve some kind of reward for everything that you're putting into it? Because that money doesn't just pay towards your business, it's bills and food and other stuff. You know, you've got to think about it long-term rather than just, well, I'll just do it as a favor here and there. So I think it's just personal. You just got to look at each individual case sometimes as well. I don't mind reading, you know, offering an opinion but there's no way i could edit nobody wants me to edit i'm blind to anything if i can't read a story <laughs> i'm not going to see mistakes in it you know what i mean yeah I don't, I just don't get stuck with that stuff well, but my problem is anything. like if i came to somebody and said would you read this i'm not looking for edits you know what i mean it's just for critique and they might take that the wrong way completely and say oh but it's going to cost you money and it's just like oh no that sucks i thought you were it my just... blah 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 it, spec it, it just depends on the wording and specifying what you want. So if you were to go to somebody and say, well, I'm looking for a beta reader to have a look at this. Are you interested? They know immediately that you want a free service because beta reading isn't paid. If you then go to them and say, well, I'm looking for somebody to read and, and go through my book. It's sometimes the wording that you use as well or the conversations that you've had in the past. So I think sometimes it's just a matter of clarify exactly what you're looking for, exactly what you want so that the wires don't cross, people yeah. don't offend, people don't upset, and people don't give the wrong information because you don't want your time wasted. And they or don't they're, want their time. If they're jumping on an edit going, oh, I'm going to make some money off of this. It's going to be like a $1,000 payday. How much are edit? They're expensive, right? If you're charging somebody edits, it's, it's like outrageous amounts of money. 
isn't it? It's I think like, it's sometimes, it's, yeah. It depends on what kind of edit you want. So there's line, developmental, both, depending on how much you want. Um, and it depends on the editor's experience, whether they're new to the game, whether they've been going ages and ages, whether they edit for, you know, the, the prices can change. I think mine's something like standard. Usually I ask to, to see a manuscript or a sample, just so I know roughly how long it's going to take me. Um, and then I, it goes from something like 40 to 50 pounds for every 5,000 words, which if you look at the standard, so that would be something like 0.0, .0 not 8p a word um some charge 0.5p a word you know so when you add it up it's actually not that bad sometimes you just got to make sure that you do all your calculations right and look at it fairly if something's going to take you twice as long or if it's a uh, hundred thousand words and one job's twenty five thousand words well you know which job's going to cost more and you know which job's going to take the longest because it's the biggest book so um yeah. yeah editing editing can get expensive but if you just exactly clarify what you want like some people will come to me and say i see you edit what do you charge and when i say well that really depends on what you oh, want man. you know in the book my and... novel's like right now it's not even done it would cost me twenty five hundred dollars to have edited <laughs> well exactly <laughs> so <laughs> i think that's that's as well why i encourage people to learn the basics of editing because sometimes it works on the quality of the manuscript if they're gonna if they think that it's gonna take them twice as long because your work's shocking not suggesting that your work shocking brian i'm just giving an example oh my um, god if you read my novel right now it would be shocking believe me it's horrible i'm reading first drafts the... always are. <laughs> it's you, really bad it, it's different if you send in a first draft if you send a first draft to an editor you can expect the price probably to be a little bit higher because well it's gonna take a lot of effort and a lot of time to fix that manuscript if you send in something that you've perfected over a month and it's it's been through three of your own edits and a beta reader well then there's less involved it's less mm -hmm. time so your price might come down a little bit it really depends on the editor their skills their experience all that kind of stuff so um that's all i do i just look at it well these are new services there, there were high demand people kept asking me so that's why i'm offering them um but i don't want to charge an arm and a leg because i wouldn't want to pay an arm and a leg so that's roughly my outlook on it and i just look at what's fair how long it's going to take me and just think well that's four hours a day or whatever out of the time that would be going into other business aspects that would be going into full-time work family life you know i'm sacrificing something to help this person as well so to do that for free is just it's just not possible um it but would be to read in to, to not have to go to your full-time job and be able to spend four hours a day editing somebody's work and eight hours a day working on your novel and four hours a day working on marketing and blah, 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 and eight hours a day sleeping and playing with your kitty cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is true. Um, yeah, but again, that it takes me back to if I want to do that by not charging people, I'm never going to get any closer to that dream. Um, and by not marketing my book and learning the basics of editing, the basics of cover design, the basics of everything that makes an Indian indie, I'm not going to get there. So it takes time and it takes effort to get anywhere near that these days so i think that's why i offer the services i do because i just want to give people that kickstart affordable kickstart with a friendly face attached to it that just you, says, okay. i think it's okay to be selfish too you want to give yourself a kickstart you want to make yourself yeah. available to have a professional career and i don't think there's anything wrong with that well yeah exactly all. why, why not think, sometimes i think these women are, webinars are fantastic that what a great i'm so happy that i had you on today to talk about that because what a great way to look at it Look, I have a great way for you to get all the information that I have available. Here's this webinar. It just costs $10. Well, yeah, and the best thing about it is they don't have to look at my face either. It's, it's like a presentation. A oh, it's a presentation. <laughs> Man, I so don't I know. I can hide you're, my face. You can even put your face on it because you're kind of photogenic. Just put your face on it and just talk it. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I think I wanted to do it where they could have information in front of them so that if what I was saying didn't quite clarify it or if they missed something, they didn't have to rewind. It was there that they can take notes. But that's the whole point of having the free ebook as well. It's a 24 page A4 booklet that they get. So it's not like three little pages that just say, have a think about your goals and you'll get there. It's a, it's a 24 page summary of the whole thing. Um, bullet what point a, page. What does uh, A4 mean? A4 is the size of paper. Is the size of paper different in America? I don't, I, you're talking, I don't even know. It's a standard I, piece of paper, like what you put in a printer. That's an A4 gotcha. piece of paper. Yeah, so it's 24 pages out. of that. I'm gonna, I, have, I have Google right here, A4, let's type it in. 
A4 in America. I wouldn't even know what it is. I call it printer paper. Well, it's a piece of printer paper, effectively. It's just, I go by sizes because I'm a bit of a stationary nerd. So A4, A5, A3, DL envelopes and all that kind of thing. I'm a oh, bit... we call it US letter. US letter. Well, there you go. It's a US letter. So it's 24 US letter pages that you get for free included. And it's a little different. It's Yeah, it's 10 quid. You just get this summary, you get activities to do to help you develop. To this help actually you says it's, it's wrong in the UK. It's it's a little bit shorter in length and a little bit longer in width. So, or some be, backwards. Yeah. So, it's slightly sure. different, I think. <laughs> but anyway, that, roughly that size anyway. That's roughly an A4 US letter, whatever you want to call it. Um, and in it as well, while I'm talking through the marketing tips, you get exercises to do. So there'll be... I'll talk through how to write a mission statement. I'm big on mission statements. I personally feel it helps to have one. So there's a template that you get in the workbook that basically you just fill in the blanks and you've got a standard mission statement. You need to then go and develop it a little bit, but to get you started, you actually get a free mission statement. You just fill the blanks in. So there's stuff like that as well, that even if you're not overly interested in a couple of the tips, so say if you've mastered social media and you're brilliant at that, but you're crap at the paperwork side of it and you don't know what contracts are and you don't know what um what beta readers do and you don't know whether you need to get copyright and all that sort of stuff then you know you can benefit in other ways so i wanted to just create something that was easy to listen to that wasn't too that, that wasn't too overwhelming i didn't want to overpower people with information and statistics um but I wanted it to be like a comfortable experience that they can log in and out of at their leisure. So it's not live. I can do live ones for people if they want, but the, the pre-recorded one, basically they just say, right, well, I finished work at 5 PM. I've got the kids for an hour. I've got to make tea, but I've got a period of time between seven and eight. I could log in there and do an hour there. If they get interrupted, they can log in the next day and finish it. You know, it's convenient as well. It's just trying to teach people in their terms. Do you give uh, resources for continued knowledge yeah i can give resources i had a live one uh oh i don't know oh. what the date was it was last week oh are you all right i just looked at the sun you oh, just don't do that. i just looked at the sun i'm oh. waiting for, i'm waiting for the eclipse to happen <laughs> ah okay i, I want to look at it so badly and they tell me not to i've lost that. my train of thought because i thought you were being attacked by so. zombies <laughs> <laughs> maybe by zombies <laughs> I've lost, completely lost my train of thought now because of that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I think I said what I needed to say anyway. But yeah, it's pre-recorded. I can do live ones. Um, and yes, there's extra resources. So I give ideal places to go for free images, places to go for free Photoshop software, legitimate software, not like rip-off versions, you know, just alternative versions. Um, like what? Ideal people to follow on YouTube. Um, GIMP, G-I-M-P oh, is a brilliant yeah. one. Instead of Photoshop, that's what I use because I don't want to pay loads for a program that I have no idea how to use. So I wanted to learn the basics in a freebie. Um, so just stuff like that, really, just to get people started for as cheap as possible. Um, and then if they want to then go on and develop their skills and pay more for the program, well, then that's up to them. Good luck. Right. You know, <laughs> all the best. Uh, it's your, your, um, I think it's a great idea. What's next? for you i mean i know you're planning on putting all this into play coming into mm. october you're writing the finish no you're actually done no yes. you're done with the first draft you're working on the second you're going to publish yep. you're going to get beta mm -hmm. readers mm -hmm. the wonderful betas um and then the book will come out i'll do my event um i will have some leave over Christmas, hopefully, where I can just relax and not have to worry about anything. Can you Most actually do systems... that? Are you the type of person that can actually sit back and relax? No, no, I'm completely lying to myself, but I'm going to try. <laughs> um, I can't even, I can't even take one of those really long relaxing baths. A bath is as long as it needs to be, and that's that. I just can't. I'm not a relaxer. I, I can I sit can just, and read I can in just bed. Picture you, you light all the candles. You have the bubbles going. You climb in. You clean. Get right out like five minutes later. And li literally, like <laughs> ten minutes maximum later, I am out of there. I'm it takes red thirty hot minutes and I'm like, to set up. You're in there like max five minutes. You're done. That's just this they stress me out more than anything because they're just the prep time and it's too hot and I just can't cope. So yeah, I'm a shower person for the time to be honest. But 
yeah, I just think I, I need some time just to relax over Christmas or at least enjoy the festivities and family and all that kind of thing. Um, and then more events I'll book. I'll edit for more people. I will help more people with covers. I will format for people and I'll just do what I need to do. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, and here. when the na next natural step becomes obvious to me and screams, give me a go, I'll do it and I'll see. Most of it's trial and error. If I do any of this and I get more copy editing jobs than I get cover design jobs, I'll lay off the cover designing until somebody needs it. It's just just as and when people need me, really. So whatever the next natural stage is, I'm sure it'll rear its ugly head at some point. So you're, um, not, you're not advertising any of that then? Just when people come to you and say, hey, will you help, would you hook me up? Um, as far as advertising goes, I'm not, you know, like running Facebook ads and stuff for it. I, I'm in lots of writing groups. And if I see somebody on there that says looking for an editor, I'll offer my services. If somebody's worried about a particular sentence, I'll help them with the sentence and then advise, you know, if you're looking for the whole book, do it at any point, give a shout, I'll help you out. Um, just stuff like that, really, just offering and being present and being helpful and then letting people know that if they're looking for things on a long-term basis and they're looking for a professional editor just to give me a bell and I'll quote them. And if somebody else beats my quote, well, go with that person. You go with whoever's best for you, but mm -hmm. at least they know that I'm there and the quote still stands, and if they need me, I'm just a message away. So that's kind of what I do. How's uh, the right right room working out on Facebook? Um, not overly popular, but my general idea was to get together the authors that I know, the authors that I love, the authors I've worked with, so we can kind of all have a little private group of our own. So if I haven't particularly worked with somebody, um they're probably not in there if i haven't worked with them and they're in there it's probably because i know them through some other means i've given them advice or we've chatted for a while and i kind of have built that relationship with them so i wanted it to be a group of people that all know me um know what i'm like know who i am and just want to genuinely get advice build relationships with people build those connections it's not a place where people can just promote 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 there's a day for that to happen but there's nothing stopping somebody putting a post on that says I'm looking for marketing ideas. Can anybody comment a couple below? And then whoever's in there at the time just says, well, well, I found Facebook to be good. I found this to be good. I went on a webinar. I did this freebie and it helped. I, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I think it's just a place where I wanted writers that I've met that I respect to have a safe place to talk to one another as well. So if I've interviewed somebody, um, and you've interviewed somebody, they might then recommend to one of the other authors that, you know, they give us a shout or it's just a, a place where people can connect, where people have got that experience with each other. Um, so they're not afraid to give each other honest criticism and feedback because they know that it's not meant maliciously. Yeah. Um, so it's a small group, but it's a small group on purpose. I don't just want to let everybody in. Mm -hmm. I want to have a look. When people request that they join, I have to approve them. I make sure first that they're a writer <laughs> and see if I know them from anywhere else. And then they get a shot. And if they blow that shot, they get kicked out. So that's roughly what they well, do. Fair. You know, it's I mean, it's <laughs> I mean, if you're going to mess things up, you get kicked out. It makes sense. If they, if they come in and abuse somebody, well, I'm sorry, but you had your chance. You lost it. See you later. Thanks for coming. But... <laughs> Do you like some uh, manners? So, do you like the moderation? Go on. Next of being a Facebook. No. Do you I like moderation? I don't like it, but thank. No. 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 Um, but I do it because I want the group to be as safe and as pleasant for everybody. I don't go on there every day and scour it and criticize everybody's comments and you said this and you're not supposed to and this is partly promoting get out and I don't bother with all that. I leave people be. And if I notice something that's inappropriate or if it gets reported to me, then I take action. But so far, I've not had to. So people, I think, in the, the moment are the right people to be in there. Um, I, I love Twitter. And I just trust. I think Twitter is fantastic. I, don't, I, I just don't find a lot of joy on Facebook for some reason. I don't know how to get beyond this is my page and this is the other page. I don't get a lot of interaction, it seems like. You know what I mean? Yeah, I had a, a strange interaction with somebody the other day that turned out to be quite pleasant, actually, but somebody just randomly tweeted me asking me what my book was about. So I explained it was about, in, in the amount of text that you've got for Twitter, which is very little, I explained that my book was about 
the opening of Pandora's box and trying to get all the evils back in. And he commented back with a really lovely, something really lovely about hope and how um, if people had just realized it was there all along. And we had a really lovely chat, a brief chat, but a lovely one about hope for a while. Um, and I think sometimes people can surprise you on social media, but I wouldn't yeah. go on Twitter expecting to have long conversations with people because the characters I've, are limited. I've had some great, fantastic interactions and 140 characters on Twitter. Just jokes, yeah. and you know, I I floated uh, what they call them gifts back and forth with people, and joke back and forth, and it's just a really great medium. And then you have Facebook, where you can write how many characters, like a lot, right? You could basically throw books at each other back and forth, yeah. Too many. It's like people just, they don't they don't interact, they like, and it's like I don't know, it just seems like everything gets lost. I'd like to get more proficient at it. it seems like a good medium. I don't know. Do you find yeah, Facebook I, good or, or is it like you play with it like you play with Twitter? You kind of put stuff on it and then you walk away. Um, I like Facebook for the groups because I get a lot of my work through the groups. I find a lot of my interviewees through groups. You know, if I put out that I'm doing the White Room or whatever, a podcast, I get a lot of people volunteering for that. Um, so it's great for finding people and finding services and helping each other. Um, but as far as advertisements go, I tried to set up a face, Facebook advertisement for my webinar and I was on there an hour trying, just trying to figure out how the hell to set up a Facebook <laughs> advertisement. Oh, man. And in the end, I just, I just, just I just waste. thought, you know what, not whatever, I'm just not even going to do it. If it takes this long to set it up, I'm sorry, but it's, I've, I've, I've spent my money in time. I'm not, I'm uh -huh. not paying for advertisements if it takes me an hour to set and it up. The, the way I hear it is once you've paid for it, it goes up and it disappears and it basically doesn't work for you anyway. I've done it once for Reddit and I put my website, I paid like five bucks, it went up a couple of times and I got no traffic out of it at all. And I'm sitting well, yeah, on Twitter, I mean, it just goes so fast. Sometimes I think for the sake of a fiver, you just never know, you might get one or two, you might get people clicking and you know, finding you and downloading your free book and stuff. So for that, I suppose it's good, but if you one or two actually, you might get one or two but for a fiver yeah. i don't know if that's even worth it but well, you know what I, it is i i just like the interactions but you don't really do any of the social media for the interactions so well i interact you don't want to interact hmm. oh yeah yeah I, I don't mind talking to people i invite people to message me all the time I'm, I'm, oh in fact that's how i found you isn't it i interacted yeah. with you yeah i don't like mind at all i really like to chat with people and i love to hear what they're writing and i like to hear all about their day you know so if they if they work full-time as a writer i'm fascinated to learn how they structure their day and how they're more productive i just don't like people friending me i do a lot because of drool. i don't know that person I drool other than that i don't mind you drool a lot yeah that's how i structure my day around <laughs> drooling and staring right, at the yeah. monitor and my blinking cursor <laughs> I stare at a blank screen quite a lot, but I think most authors do. I don't think you're on your own there, Brian. Um, but yeah, that's, I don't mind. I don't mind talking to people. I actually quite like getting to know people. I just don't. I just know the fine line between I don't know you, I've never met you, to best friends and share everything. And yeah, you know, I just I'm just very safety conscious on social media, which I think a lot of people need to be. Some As people I advise, are. yeah, definitely don't give yeah. any real information away. <laughs> um, but there's very few people that I friend on my personal account, you know, like I think I'm probably friends with you on my personal account. I'm, I think I'm friends on with you. Facebook? Yeah. I don't even have a personal account on Facebook. Well, whatever account you've got, I think you're friended with me, not my author really? page, my actual page. I'm pretty sure you are, yeah. There's very few people that I get to know well enough to even allow that because I like to protect myself. If, if I've never met somebody in person and I've only really spoken to them or, you know, helped them with something, I kind of feel, well, I don't really want all my family pictures and stuff being accessible to that person until I feel that they have earned the right to know me personally. So that's why I have, I have an author page. Um, again, that's in the marketing webinar about how to set up a page and, and keep stuff private and how to be professional and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I think that's basically all it is. If you're going to interact with people, by all means, be lovely, be nice to them, help them. But if they send you a friend request, they need to know that, you know, you're nice and everything, but there's a, there's a line, mm -hmm. you know, I totally so. get that. Um, so what do you want people to know that we have not already covered? Um, 
Well, I think I've covered everything service wise, marketing wise. Um, the only thing I'll just say is if you are looking to market, if you're an indie author and you're either brand new to it or you're say six months or a year into the process and you're just thinking, what is the point? Nothing's working. I'd just say to you, don't give up because marketing takes time and it takes blood, sweat and tears, all of which I've had a lot of in the past 18 months. Um, it takes tantrums like little kid screaming in the middle of a supermarket tantrum um and it, but it also takes patience and you just need to find the get that fine line between between the two for it to kind of can kick I, off. can i add something also my theory right now is you just got to keep writing too yeah you got to keep putting stuff out there you just got to keep writing put novels out there put novellas out there put novelettes out there oh put yeah poems out there put anything and put recipes out there put whatever you can out into the world as many stories, as many characters, as many whatever you can out there as you possibly can can stomach and just flood the world with your ideas because you never know what's going to catch. And if you've got 100 novels just waiting for somebody to read, it's just going to be better off for you in the long run. And you have oh, one yeah, don't, don't grind yet. to a halt. Don't yeah. grind to a halt between books and just think, no, I've got to market. I've got to dedicate a year to marketing. No, 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 no. keep writing. Keep enjoying what you enjoy, but no. dedicate a little bit of time every day to your marketing. But there is one author that I do think is doing it well. Um, she wrote Go West, Young Woman. I think her name is Nancy Quinn. I've interviewed her. She moved to the mountains. She's a lovely lady. Um, if she's listening, hi, Nancy. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I think she's got the right idea. She wrote a book, and in the book, there's recipes. So she does YouTube videos with the characters from the books. She has horses that she kind of introduces and talks about their likes and dislikes and their personalities, and she gives recipes and cooks on her YouTube channel. And she's got the, the right idea. She's doing a little bit of everything to entertain the reader as well, not just force sales she's actually just wanting to interact with them and give them cool recipes to try and introduce them to the horses and get them to ask to ask questions and stuff you know it's light-hearted it's fun so if you if you've got a youtube channel and you're looking for stuff to do if you've got books such as like recipe books or whatever do stuff like that as well because that neat. can help that's a good idea that's i'm gonna reach out to her i think i'd like to have a conversation if she'll let me she's the that nicest person in the world honestly and and I just think she's really got the right idea, um, as have a lot of other authors that I've met um, and that I follow on YouTube. But with me interviewing her, it was just something that came to mind. But um, I mean, that just, yeah, I just brings think... up the best part is like the best marketing you can do is just be yourself. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just be a good person. I mean, yeah. you've said it. You've said it many, many times. Just be a good person. Be a good person. Just be genuine. Be, available, be genuine. Just be a good person. And I think you've done that in spades. You are a wonderful conversationalist. Um, you know, I asked a couple questions. I think I heard you already answered one, but one of the, what are you reading? Anything new? Uh, I'm still reading Tony Robbins. Okay. I am also reading, and you probably laugh. <laughs> I am. I didn't mean to until you said that last part, but ha, ha, ha. Okay, what else? <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Um, I'm also reading, get ready for the giggles, copy editing and proofreading for dummies. No, why not? Um, it helps because, you, doesn't it? As a writer, are you are you well, are you noticing it helping your writing at all, or is it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely. But I think it's just because I'm doing my copy editing and proofreading course for publishers. It's a bit different to editing for authors because there's all these symbols that you need to know. And I think if you were to use the symbols when editing for an author, they'd just be like, "What are you on about?" So <laughs> um, I'm learning all the symbols and stuff to edit and stuff for proof for, for publishers mm -hmm. to proof for publishers themselves. Um, and I think that the book is just helping to expand my knowledge as I do this course. I'm reading the course material and stuff as well, but it's just something else that. It's actually really interesting um, and with it being a for dummies book everything is basically set out at the easiest possible level so it's going in and it's staying in it's not good. going in through one ear and out through the other oh, um, i'm reading that i'm reading tony robbins and um and i think that's pretty much it anything Nothing else for fun. well tony robbins is for fun as well i just i like oh, personal, yeah i like personal development books i just find them interesting i like to hear what other people's kind of mindset is and what other people advise for a happy healthy life so I just kind of, yeah, I just read it just because I enjoy it sometimes. And if I get something out of it, well, good. If not, well, I read it for the pleasure anyway. So I don't like Tony Robbins. Uh, I feel like this entire podcast has been one advice sentence after another. So I'm, I feel bad about this last question. But if you could think of anything else that you'd want to tell a uh, 
you know, anybody getting into the writing game, what would it be? Um, be brave. Brave? Wow, that's a great one. It really is important to be brave. Mm -hmm. You can't be do brave. anything without bravery. I think if you if you're scared all the time and you're nervous, I'm I'm an anxious person. I've suffered with anxiety for years. I had OCD when I was younger, like severe OCD when I was younger. That's knowledge. It's nothing overly secretive. Um, and I think that's just taught me that sometimes if you just don't go for it, you're missing out on an opportunity. So sometimes just be brave, just get over it, and just think, well, it is scary, and there is all these risks, but let's just try it and see what happens and just go for it. And if it fails and it crashes and burns, well, you've been there, you've done that, you've learned your lesson, move on. Yeah. You know, so just be brave and enjoy it. Have fun. Beautiful stuff. And uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I'm going to hook the notes up with a bunch of links, right? Yeah, sure. Cool. And, uh, well, thank you so much. I appreciate you joining me today. No problem. Thanks for having me on. As always, a pleasure. All righty. And we're we'll, um, going to have you on for a Mirage. We're going to do Mitch album, right? Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Excellent. All right. <laughs> Thank you. See you later. All righty. Bye-bye. And that was E. Rachel Hardcastle. Uh, coming up, I have Richard Keeler. He is an author and podcaster in his own right. Um, that will be tomorrow. Uh, cool stuff coming up next week. I have Bob Beers, Marvel artist and author of noir novels as well. Uh, guys, really appreciate it. You can follow me on Twitter at B R Y A I E L L O. That's a Bry A Yellow. And I can uh, share my fiction with you and all my podcasts, including Mirage and Origin Stories on Creativity on my website, brianayellow.com. Always great to have you. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Bye-bye.